theme we had on the books was about innovation, innovation on campus and beyond. Um, I had a front row seat to um, this person's innovative spirit when, uh, when she was associate dean. Um, she came up with ideas a mile a minute, okay? Uh, there was never, you know, never a dull moment. I mean, there's always new things. The system couldn't absorb them all, right? I mean, it was like moving so fast. So um, that's a subject that we're, we're really gonna focus on. Mm -hmm. Tell us about some of the innovations that you feel you had a part of both here and maybe at CAS. I mean, I think some of my, my favorite initiatives, um, actually, and we're coming back to some of them now, were around uh, inclusive excellence, diversity mm -hmm. and inclusion. Um, we started business fellows and Linder Women in Business here because we had a clear need and an opportunity to support people better and to build our culture, at recognizing as one of my P&G friends the other day, diversity wins, and how do you really bake that into everything you do? And I've always been very, very passionate about diversity and inclusion. And I get to London, and I'm having tea, because that's what you do, um, about three weeks in with one of my most senior faculty who tells me, just you know, for the record, I am one of the grievance. I said, what are you talking about? And she said, all the women faculty are suing the school. <laughs> this is the first woman dean, and I'm three weeks in, and all I can think is, nobody told me that. <laughs> <laughs> right? And I said, so why? And she said, because we have the biggest pay discrepancy in the UK. So we started innovation there, particularly around women in the UK. That is a very big issue. And I was sitting four blocks from the Bank of England. So 17 of our 27 specialized masters were in finance, where investment banking is at 7% women, right? So we have a particular areas. But I guess, to me, innovation is driven by a problem. It's driven by seeing a need and then having friends around, which is what we did here too, that said, bring your expertise, bring your ideas, and, and let's move. What have you learned about innovation as a scholar and practitioner of the subject, and how are you trying to apply some of these lessons here? So it's funny, I, I was thinking of Ralph's point about it's very true, and some people are going to say, you're still like this, Mayor, that I love big ideas. And I get very excited by big ideas. And one of the key things I've learned through both my research and my experience at London is you have to balance that with discipline. But I do believe there's a yin and yang to innovation that is around creativity and discipline that's around short term and long term. I mean, there are a host of these that I study in my research as well that we need to make sure that we're leveraging. That there's a creative friction actually between them that is positive. If you can build more simplified frameworks, you can empower great innovation. And by frameworks, I mean, what are the constraints, right? What's the overarching goal? What are the specific criteria that you've got to achieve with this innovation? And then you give it to the experts. And you say, now go crazy. Go crazy in that box. So if, if a culture of innovation is something that we want to take hold both in the, on this college and also mm -hmm. the university, what are some of the key levers that you can try to apply? In my research, we, we talk about the importance of separating and connecting, really building depth in specific areas and thinking about how you connect them in a broader umbrella. I mean, the, the most important overarching enabler we have is vision. And it has to be sharp enough that we say, OK, we know where we're going. Because that, that's the first criteria we should be looking at. Does it fit with who we are and what we care about and what wakes us up in the morning? But then I think it's some of like what we were talking about with interdisciplinary. How do we build frameworks that enable four plus ones, which are now becoming almost three plus ones? How do we simplify things? I think a lot about semester conversion because we built frameworks. We said the undergraduate experience should have X, Y, and Z. And by the way, this Z is going to be interchangeable. And all of a sudden, we have students taking minors from everywhere on this campus. That's beautiful. What we haven't quite figured out is how do we do that at the graduate level? Either four plus ones, that's easier. It's still amazingly hard. But the real beauty could be how do we build integrated master's programs? Because right now, what we're doing is every time we do it, it's a completely new yeah. beast. Well, that is a bad idea. It takes enormous energy versus back to the kind of the semester conversion undergraduate. Here are the plug and play pieces. 
right? Here's an MBA, I'm looking at Patrice, right? How do we plug in design? How do we plug in? Right now, there is no simple way to do that because we haven't built frameworks that you say, oh, I got it. I need it to be nine credits, it fit, it's in this semester, go, right? And that's all you do. This is not, this is the ultimate, in, in my view, of academic freedom. Mm -hmm. Because all it is is a framework. The experts are the ones that need to fill it in and say, what should it do?